Taste the Mediterranean through March 19th at Whole Foods Market. Save on animal welfare certified bone and beef short ribs, sustainable wild caught sockeye salmon, and more. Find sales on Parmigiano Reggiano, charcuterie, and ground lamb. Grab an olive boule bread from the bakery. Plus, wines from the Mediterranean start at just $8.99. Taste the Mediterranean now at Whole Foods Market. Must be 21 plus. Please drink responsibly. This podcast is made possible through donations from listeners like you and our partners at Goalie Ashwa Gummies. You can find them at goalie.com. Use promo code the Show Up That Foundation to get 10% off your order. Zendurance Active Wellness and Sports Nutrition. Their products are designed to maximize your health. At Zendurance, they strive to support and have a positive impact on the wellness of every hardworking dad. Use my code the Show Up Dad and get 10% off your next purchase. For more info, go to www.zendurance.com. Tall Man Equipment. Standing taller than the rest of the competition in Lyman Tools since 1952. Give them a follow at www.tallmanequipment.com. And last but not least, Adam Lane Smith. He is an attachment specialist who helps people to heal, connect, and build. Use my promo code SHOW, spelled S-H-O-W, for a 50% discount on his attachment boot camp course. Thank you. Welcome to Shove That Podcast, where our mission is to improve the well-being of children by increasing the portion of children growing up with an involved, responsible, and committed father. The Shove That Foundation, Inc. is a 501c3 organization that encourages dad to become more than just a paycheck. Today's guest is none other than Corey Cordero. He is a fitness coach, entrepreneur, a father. He has been in the fitness industry for over 10 years and loves to help men supercharge their fitness and skyrocket their energy self-confidence by building a body that they are proud of. He is a proud single father of two boys, four years old and two years old. Welcome to our show, Corey. Thanks for having me, man. I'm excited to be here, dude. Thank you for having me. Yeah, for sure. Well, I kind of wanted to start this off like we do with all our podcasts by you giving us a rundown of how you grew up and what was it like, man, if you don't mind. Yeah, um, how I grew up, man, there's so much to tell with that, but let me summarize, I guess, some some key things. So I grew up uh, with three brothers. Um, I am the middle child. So I got, there's four boys, um, no sisters, uh, and was raised by a single mom, man. I mean, my dad, you know, still in my life, but, you know, it was one of those things where we would see him every other weekend, you know, so for the most part, it was my mom raising us. Mm -hmm. I grew up in uh, Boyle Heights, East LA area for a few years. And I ended up moving to Whittier for a year. And then eventually we moved, you know, upper middle class area, Hacienda Heights, San Gabriel Valley area, which is where I've been most of my life. So, you know, shout out to mom, man. She really made it happen, you know, putting herself through the sheriff academy. You know, she became a police officer um, and, you know, then a detective. So she would, she really helped me and my brothers, um, you know, just give us a better life, man. Give us the boat the best that she could. Um so, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I grew up and, you know, uh, played sports all my life. I've been mm-hmm. an athlete all my life. So physical fitness has been the thing from the very beginning. Um, you know, sports throughout through high school and then into, you know, uh, post high school, studied at Cal State LA. I went there for exercise science, which was my major at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, spent a few years there in college. I ended up dropping out of college, though to open up my gyms, uh, that I had, I ran, I ran two gyms for seven years. It was called powerhouse fitness. Um, so that was kind of like the professional, you know, I guess part where I started to, you know, learn business entrepreneurship, um, you know, so many things, man, that owning a business has taught me over these last seven years. Uh, and I just sold them recently this past year. So I no longer, I no longer own the gyms, but I'm still very much, uh, you know, in the fitness industry still as a fitness coach, I just do online fitness now. Um, and this is what I do now, man. I work with guys. I help them supercharge their fitness, get healthy, get in shape, you know, build their energy, uh, build mm-hmm. their self-confidence. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm still a fitness coach. Wow. That seems like you have really had to uh, overcome a lot of uh, transitions in your life. 
um hats off to your mom for sure i mean <laughs> to start yeah, off man. where you were you know um i i take it was she a young a young woman when she had you guys or oh dude wow my mom's story is crazy brother i mean came mm. here at the age of nine um illegally you know so my mom's from mexico my parents both of them you know immigrants from mexico so my yeah. mom came here at the age of nine she lost both of her parents by the time she came here so no mom no, no mom and dad was raised by my older aunts and, um, you know, so she was able to make it happen, dude. She, you know, yeah. worked, you know, she just worked her butt off and, um, you know, started at the, um, uh, the, was it the, uh, Los Angeles, uh, was it through the court? She was working in the court system mm -hmm. for the district attorney's office. Yeah. So she worked district attorney's office, ended up joining the sheriff department, you know, to basically get us out of you know, where we were living at in LA, yeah. the Hacienda Heights, you know, a little upper middle class area. So it was just progressive, man. You know, she really, yeah. you know, did a lot for us. Um, and I learned a lot, man, a lot of values from my mom, work ethic, you know, just being disciplined. Um, so it was a lot, a lot of good things that I got from moms. So shout out to mom. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Definitely was not easy, especially being a Hispanic <laughs> female, you know what I mean? Single right. kids, uh, you know, coming from Mexico and just being able to adapt and overcome to everything and provide the life that she wanted you guys to have, you know, that's, that's really, that's amazing to see that, you know, um, now you talked about your father a little bit and how he was out of the picture. Um, how's your relationship with him now? If you guys have one? Yeah. You know, oh man, my dad, dude, um, I love the guy. Um, love my dad. It's definitely been a roller coaster of a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I can start with just kind of the his backstory. So my dad grew up without his dad. Mm -hmm. So my grandpa was not in his life at all. Um, so that definitely, you know, impacted him. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, as a kid, you know, as a kid, you don't need much, man. You know, you're you're kind of like, you're, you're like a sponge, right? You're, you're just kind of, you know, taking everything that your parents say for what it is you're just living life right so as a kid you know pretty close with pops it wasn't yeah. until I got older that that changed you know so you go from being a kid to your teenage years into adulthood um, I realized at that time like my my needs changed right like mm -hmm. my emotional needs changed so that kind of put a strain on my relationship with my dad because here I am this young man you know going through life into adulthood and I'm just trying to figure things out, man. You know, I don't know who I am. I yeah. don't know what my purpose in this life is. I don't know what I want, where I'm going. And unfortunately, my pops, because he's a product of his upbringing, he mm -hmm. didn't know how to fulfill that role. You know, um, didn't really give any type of guidance or mentorship or, you know, leadership. It was more like just the basic necessities. Like, hey, look, I here's your clothes and food and here's some time that we spent together, but there was no real values being taught to me. Mm -hmm. There was no leadership, right? There was no nothing. I wasn't really learning so much, uh, really anything from him other than, you know, it was just that time that we spent. Right. Yeah. So as I got older, dude, that just put a strain. Cause you know, I, I, uh, I started to figure things out on my own, become my own man. But I realized the more that I was growing, I felt like we were kind of getting, you know, farther apart because I'm going down this path in my life. And yeah. my dad was just kind of stuck where he was at. So we just kind of drifted. Um, so for a while, dude, it was pretty tough. I didn't talk to him for a few years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, I kind of started to do my own work on myself, right? Personal development. Um, and then, you know, ended up kind of patching things up with him. So we have a relationship now. It isn't, I wouldn't say it's the strongest relationship. You know, that's always something we can improve on. Um, yeah. It's just been an up and down, man. It's been an up and down thing with him throughout these mm -hmm. last few years. Have you ever sat down with him, Corey, and kind of asked him, like, man, what was going on with you during those times, father, and just kind of pick his brain a little bit? You know what? I, I actually did, man. This was actually right around the time before my first son was born. Mm -hmm. I made that decision. I hadn't, I, you know, prior to that, I hadn't talked to him in a few years. I, you know, we were on speaking terms, and I just made that decision. I said, you know what? My first son is about to come into this world. I don't want to have... I don't want to continue to have this like, you know, you know, strange relationship with my dad. I was like, dude, let me, let me sit down with him and talk. So we did. I actually called him up and I said, Hey, you know, can we talk? And he's like, yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, went over to his house. We sat down and we talked for hours, bro. We talked for hours and just kind of let every, you know, I, I said my piece. 
he mm-hmm. said his piece. And um, that was kind of the start of our, you know, you know, building our relationship again, which was great. Yeah. It was great. But, you know, like anything else, right, like any other relationship is something you got to work at. Yeah. So, you know, we were able to, again, meet eye to eye with some stuff. Definitely still things that, you know, we need to work on. But it was I was just happy that I was able to do that because mm-hmm. it just it was so so toxic dude when you have that resentment for someone it builds up it's it's toxic you know um so it was just a great way for me and him to kind of you know reconnect get eye to eye and just build that relationship from there Mm -hmm. i like that you said toxic Corey, because you're absolutely true unforgiveness you know it's like taking a pill right and you're expecting the other person to to die right that's exactly how unforgiveness is you know, and I, I see that link between the toxicity, you know what I mean? Not being able to forgive and holding on to these burdens, you know, and, and a lot of times they don't even know that they did them. And, you know, just to give you an example with my old man, you know, some of the questions I asked him when I had this heart to heart with him, because I think it's important that we do. Um, He couldn't even remember like that he had done a lot of the stuff, you know what I mean? He's like, I never did that or, you know, kind of denial. And it could be one he doesn't remember or number two it could be shame because a lot of times i think you're thinking like how the heck could i have done that you know and i attribute that even with me like when my wife comes to me and asks me certain stuff like why did i do this or what was i thinking you know early in our marriage or whatever and it's like i don't know you know i don't know why i was thinking i don't know why i did it and number two you know it's it's kind of shameful because you're just like man I can't believe I did that. Like, what the heck possessed me to do that? You know what I'm saying? That's a good point, man. No, and and you're absolutely right, dude. It, my dad, same reaction. He's like, I never did that, or mm-hmm. it wasn't that bad, or you, you know, it, it was almost like I, I felt, I felt that he was trying to downplay how serious it was. Yeah, and that was like, dude, like, okay, well, if you're, and again, you know, mind you, this happened a long time ago, but it was like yeah. that you. It doesn't matter how I say it or how many times I say it. If you feel in your heart that you did nothing wrong or that it wasn't that bad, then that's your reality. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So like, that's how you're going to feel about it. So we can agree to disagree on that, but it doesn't change the effect that it had on me. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So it was like, I still felt what I felt, you know, I went through what I went through. So, um, but that's a big one, dude. I think it is the shame and the guilt. And my dad's kind of like, well, you know, Mm -hmm. It just sucks, man. What I've what I've come to realize now, as an as an adult, now that I have my kids, it's like my dad was just a pride of his upbringing, mm-hmm. and because my dad has so much trauma that happened to him that he didn't resolve, it was just being passed down to me and to my brothers. Yes, you know. So that that's what I came to realize. Like, you know what, Dad, you're a great guy. Um, I'm sorry that Grandpa did that to you and everything else that happened to you, but unfortunately, because you weren't able to deal with it and solve your own trauma, you passed it down to me. And I, and I recognize that, but I, and again, before all this awareness of myself, I judged him on that. I'm like, because of you, right. I'm being like the victim. victim. And it was, it was, it was just a lot of that, man. So many years I was a victim and that's what caused, you know, me not wanting to speak to him, but that resentment dude build up. It was so toxic. It was eating me up, man. It was eating me up so bad. Where just even mentioning his name would trigger me. Wow. Um, you, you know what I mean? It was so bad, dude. And, and that unfortunately led to my, you know, I was drinking like crazy, um, you know, drugs. It was like, it, it was just my way of coping with that. And it was unhealthy. exactly, man. The pain was so big, so much that it's like, I don't know how to deal with this. So, you know, give me the, give me the drink, give me the drugs. Let me do some, you know, uh, anything that's going to numb me. So I don't have to kind of deal with this. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a big thing, man, dealing dealing with that. But um, it's that, but like you said, it was just him not realizing it, and then you know being able just to work because at that point it's like, well, where do we go from here? Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, for sure. And then, you know, for other people, you know, for all our guests that are listening, you know, I have guests or even just people that come to me and say, "Hey, man, I know something's wrong. I don't like the way I'm acting or responding. I don't like the way I'm treating my wife. I don't like the way I'm treating my kids." my coworkers, but I don't know what is wrong. And the first thing I always tell them was, how is your, or I ask them is, how is your relationship with your father? Mm. Man, seven out of 10 guys, dude, I asked that. Dude, tears just start welling up in their eyes. You know, and it's, um, 
it's crazy. It's a, it's crazy how those father wounds have an effect on us unless we deal with them, you know? Oh, 100%, man. I mean, that, that was me for so long, dude. I, I just, you know, yeah, that was me for so long. So much resentment, you know, pain, um, mm -hmm. you know, anger, right? It's like, you know, you lash out because again, you, you, you don't know how to yeah. deal with it, right? You don't know how to like, how do I, you know, manage these emotions without popping off or, you know what I'm saying? Doing something that, that, you know, you're just lashing out. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I totally agree. It, it's, it's tough when you don't have the tools, right. When you don't mm -hmm. know how to manage your emotions, it, it's so easy. Just what's, what's reactionary, right. I'm going to go off on someone. I'm going to yell, I'm going to fight, I'm going to drink, right. Drug, whatever. Um, but that's key, dude. It, it's very much, um, I remember feeling like that for so long, you mm -hmm. know, it, it, it did affect me. Like that. it just really ate me up inside. Um, before I actually made the decision to like, hey, let me start my healing journey. So that mm -hmm. way I can work on this relationship with my pops. Mm -hmm. Now, Corey, I want to kind of get a little, you know, deep here with you and ask you. Um, now, after realizing that you had these issues, these father issues and wounds and stuff like that, um, would you attribute that to some of your uh like i don't know were you married before or were you divorced because i know you're a single father now like how did that affect your relationships with with women oh man wow Whew, that's a great question bro um no so i'm not married um okay. and but that did affect my relationship with women 100 um mm -hmm. and not necessarily in a good way man um i think for, for a long time too, because I had all these things that I hadn't dealt with, right? These, these, you know, the father wound, right? Not, uh, yeah. you know, that, and just, you know, my own trauma, right? It was like yeah. all these unresolved things. Um, I think for me, you know, with women, it was more of like, uh, it was like, it was a coping thing, right? It was like, well, you know, I, I can have this, this woman that I'm with and it's like, okay, well, you know, we have sex, right? Cool. So it was, it was very much using them in that sense of like, hey, if we can just, if you're giving me what I need right now, mm -hmm. I'm good. But there was no emotion, like very hard for me to emotionally connect with them. Mm -hmm. It was very hard for me to like take them serious and like actually, you know, honestly, man, for lack of a better word, it was me being selfish and just like having my way with them. And then mm -hmm. once I'm done with you, I'm done with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And And unfortunately, that caused a lot of pain because here I am, you know, mistreating women disrespecting women to an extent right um mm -hmm. just not honoring them you know um using them right whether it was for sex or just for whatever whatever need i had at that moment mm -hmm. um and unfortunately man that caused a lot of pain i hurt a lot of different women you know um and as a result of that me having my two kids which by the way have two different mothers so there's two different moms Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't go about it in that way of like, oh, I'm going to, you know, do this the right way. Right. Like get married, you know, build my family. Right. Have that family union mm -hmm. because I just had, you know, I guess use the excuse of like, well, I didn't have that. So I don't even know how to even create yeah. this family that, that, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. that, that was kind of, I guess my excuse, like, well, I didn't have that. So what am I going to do? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And especially when you didn't have a good example of it, you know what I mean? I could see where there was uh, hesitation to want to step into a marriage, you know what I mean? You know, or, or any kind of lifelong uh, commitment, for sure. Um, that's a, an attachment disorder, for sure. You know, um, they say a lot of guys, like even for myself, it's hard to get close to somebody and open up to somebody because you're afraid of putting down your guard. You know, you're afraid to, to get hurt again. Yeah. You know, and that comes from our childhood. Right. You know, and mm -hmm. uh, when that happens, we, we can't, uh, we can't attach to our, to our wives, our spouse. Right. Um, Bible says that when you leave from your mother and father, the two of you, meaning your wife, you cleave to each other. Right. Mm -hmm. And which means like a grafting together to come together. Right. And, when you have something broken inside you, it's hard to graft. It's hard to connect. It's hard to, to, to grow together. You right. know? So we definitely need to fix that for sure. No, 100. You, and you're absolutely right, man. I think me just not having that example. I mean, again, I don't want this to be an excuse, but that, that was my reality at the time. Right. It's like, yeah. 
my mom is not married, you know, my dad remarried, but his marriage, I mean, that, you know, that's a whole nother story. It's, it's just when you don't yeah. have the example of two people honoring each other and respecting each other, mm -hmm. you, you kind of like, well, what is it supposed to be then? You know, and you're absolutely right, man. I think for me, marriage was like, dude, there's no way I'm going to get married. Right. Like, I'm not going to go through that. I'm not going to put myself out there, be vulnerable, right. To get hurt. Um, so you're absolutely right. Dude. It was so much, um, past that you know, so much things that have happened in the past that it's like why would i want to get married like what does that even yeah. look like? <laughs> you know what i mean what what is a healthy marriage right mm -hmm. um you know what i mean um but yeah it, it's definitely something that um i feel has really impacted my perception of marriage and like well i'm not saying i wouldn't want to do that i'm sure with the right person i would definitely want to but like mm -hmm. anything else right something you got to kind of work through to like mm -hmm. open to it and then be i think the key thing is being able to receive it yeah right yeah, for sure. And also too, like I've heard it said before from a, a, a guy named Jimmy Evans, you know, is one of the guys that we listen to um, and we get some great insight from him. He always says that health marries health. So it's important. Okay. It's important that like for you, like for, especially for the guys who are listening right now, if you're looking for the right woman and stuff like that, there's no right woman. You're going to attract according to your health level. So if you got issues that you're dealing with, guess what? You're going to attract that same type of person. Okay. And the reason behind that is because you know what she needs and she needs what you need subconsciously. And you guys, if you work together, the way marriage was designed, you guys are going to help each other with those issues. Okay. And that's why a lot of times when we get married with someone, they're like, oh, I don't like this person. I don't, I don't, uh, you know, there's some, I hate when they do that or whatever. If you really stop and look at it, or even with our children, if we stop and we don't like a, a, something that they're doing, you got to ask yourself, number one, where did they learn that? And number two, why am I recognizing that? Is that something that I'm doing? And that's why it's a red light because I don't like it because I know I do it subconsciously. You know what I mean? So it's, it's all about self-awareness. You know, and it seems like you're doing that. So no, that's it, brother. Man, you hit the spot on, dude. That that that's deep. Um, definitely self awareness, man. Um, but you're absolutely right. It's like you're gonna attract a mirror and image, right, of where you are, right. So if you're, you know, I don't want to say broken, right, but I want to say like if you have these things that you haven't dealt with, mm -hmm. you're gonna attract something to either you know complement, well, not complement, but you're either fulfill a need that you have at that time. But mm -hmm. a lot of the times, it's toxic, man. It, it's unresolved trauma. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if you got two people with unresolved trauma that don't aren't aware of it, they're going to collide. You know what I mean? And that happened with me, man. They did with relationships. I've seen it happen with my family, right? Like friends, you know what I mean? Like I can't even tell you, dude, how many, you know, people that I know from school or just in school um, got married, had kids, divorced, you mm -hmm. know, what I mean? um, infidelity, you know, there's infidelity, right? There's like being cheated on there, you know, um, not speaking to their kid. Like, there's just so much stuff, dude, that I've seen. And unfortunately, it's because of what you said. It's like, man, if you don't really address these things that have happened to you, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to show up in one way or another in every area of your life, relationships, your health, your, you know, finances, uh, you know, with your kids, right? Everything. So um, I think that's key, man. What you just said, self-awareness is huge. It's a big mm -hmm. one. Well, it seems like you've been able to accomplish that and, and become self-aware and um, deal with your stress, right? Because life's, life's hard, you know what I mean? Um, that's why I asked you on here, Corey, is because I wanted to talk to you a little bit about mental health and how you're using physical activity to deal with stress as a positive outlet. Um, I read somewhere, actually, I read on the, uh, according to it, the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, they said that it's impossible to eliminate stress, right? but you can manage it. And most people usually do. And uh, according to the same recent study, the ADA online poll, some 14% of people make use of regular exercise to cope with stress. So can you share with our audience, like how you're coping with that and, and dealing with it and what you found and what you've seen through your studies? Yeah. So, you know, obviously being a fitness coach, man, um, what, what I've found to work for so mm -hmm. many guys, including myself is, um is fitness because it, it's, for me, what I say, it's the gateway to change. And the reason mm -hmm. why it's because it's the easiest place to start. You know, if you think about it, it's like, look, um, you know, there's so many things that we, we have going on at any given moment in our life that we don't have control over, right? There's so many things out of our control, 
but your mm-hmm. fitness is something that you do have control. You can, you know, you have control how how active you are. You have control over, you know, exercise, right? Moving your body. You have control over what you put in your mouth, what you're eating, right? Yeah. Uh, you have control over what you're consuming, right? Mentally, right? So that's why I always like to start with fitness because it's the easiest place to start. And once you start to to get results off that, you're feeling better, right? You're looking better, dropping some weight, energy levels are going up, right? You're feeling healthy. Mm-hmm. That's going to translate. It's going to transfer to other areas of your life, right? You're going to show up as a different husband. You're going to show up as a different dad. You're going to show up as a different employee, right? Uh, you're going to show up as a different friend, father, you know, son, all your relationships. So you have to have a foundation. And I've just found fitness is the easiest place to start. You have control over it. And then from there, man, it's just build, you know, laying out the foundation and then the building blocks, you start building on top of it. Mm-hmm. It's helped me and it's helped the guys that I, that I work with my clients who start with fitness, because again, they take care of themselves. And when you take care of yourself, you can take care of other people. Mm-hmm. Do you see with your, get with your clients and stuff like that, do you tend to see the same type of um, problems per se? Like, uh, like that, that they deal with, you know, whether it be uh, work, marital, stuff like that. Yeah. I know it's a question. deeper yeah. issue. Well, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, but I guess what a, a big thing that a lot of guys uh, come to me for is, um, I mean, their health, you know, but yeah. even bigger than that, it's their self-confidence, man. They're mm-hmm. like, I just don't feel confident, you know? And then again, confidence is in different areas. Like you don't feel confident as, as how you, you know, your self-esteem, how you feel mm-hmm. about yourself. You don't feel confident as a dad. You don't feel confident as as a worker, maybe as an employee, or or if you own a business, um, you don't feel confident as as a husband. And it it starts with them doing the work on themselves, right? Mm-hmm. And again, it is deeper, dude. Like I said, there's traumas, right? There's unresolved trauma. There's yeah, you know, dysregulated nervous systems. But ultimately, what I tell these guys is like, look, if you can just keep your commitments to yourself, right? Perfect example. If you say you're going to work out today and you work out, that's a win. Right. If you, if you say you're going to drink your water and eat healthy and go for a run, that's a win. So these little wins that you get, that's the the building blocks of you starting to build your confidence because you're keeping your word to yourself. Mm. Right. That's really where the confidence is going to build from. You got to keep your word. Um, so that's the thing is once they start doing that, they start to realize, hey, wait a minute, man, I I, I know I started, the, you know, when I started, it was so hard for me to do X, Y and Z. But now they see how far they've come. And they, they're just proud of themselves, man. Like when you're proud of yourself, yeah, oh, dude, that your your Scott, your you know, confidence is off the chart at that point, you know. Mm-hmm. And then again, it translates to other areas. It's like, hey, I worked out today. I you know did my cardio. I ate healthy. Um, and they're they're showing up differently for their wives, for their kids, for their business, uh, at work, right? Getting promotions. So many different areas of their life get affected, but it mm-hmm. starts with them. They have to honor those commitments to themselves. Mm. I like that. Like you said, you have to honor those commitments to self, you know what I mean? Cause that's where it starts. Um, I liken that to a, uh, one of the things they do to you when you go in an airplane, right? So you're riding this airplane and the first thing they tell you is, you know, in case of an accident, the mask comes down, you go ahead and put your mask on first. Okay. Before you start helping anybody else. You know, and I kind of liken that with what you're saying with our health. And it starts with you. It starts with us as fathers, as husbands. We need to make sure we're showing up for them. And a part of that is by having that self-awareness, you know, because what good are we? You know, what, you know, if our kids are stressed out, they're freaking out. We're stressed out. We're freaking out. They're picking up on our energy. Like you said, the confidence, you know, I, I, I liken that to energy. You know what I mean? If we're putting out this bad vibe, bad energy, you know, our kids are going to pick up on that. Next thing you know, your household, they're walking around on eggshells because of the way you approach them because you're low, you're in a low vibration that you're operating in, you know? Right. 100. I agree with that hundred um, percent. That That's so true. It's like, if you're, you know, not taking care of yourself, you, you can't mm-hmm. leave that way. You know what I mean? Because again, as as fathers, as husbands, as sons, as you know, just men, you have to lead by example. That's the only way you can lead, man. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. I think, you know, a lot of times it's easy to say one thing, but if you don't follow through with it, it doesn't hold any weight. Do that energy, like you said, it, it's being transferred and it's either going to be a positive energy or it's going to be a negative energy. And if you're not able to be aware of that, 
Mm-hmm. Consciously, what you're doing is is you're repeating these patterns that your family's picking up on, right? Your kids are seeing like there's no way that I can tell my sons, hey, hey, son, you know, you guys need to work out and do this and that, and they see dad low energy on the couch, you know, just, <laughs> just out of shape, right? I can't even play with yep. them, right? Like imagine yep. that my four year old and my two year old dude all over the place, full of energy. And I'm able to play with them all day, dude, all day till they get tired because I, I have the energy to do that. Now, imagine if I didn't, oh, dude, I'd be like sitting down, yelling at them. Don't do this. Don't do that. Right. Because <laughs> they see what dad's doing. So I think that's so important, man. It's like you have to be the example for the, your kids, for mm-hmm. your spouse. But it starts with you honoring your commitments and being aware of what what you need to be doing, you know? Yeah, for sure. And they're so, I mean, they're so apt to pick up everything we do as fathers. You know what I mean? Um, prime examples. I remember being a little kid and my dad, he was a gymnast. Okay. Um, he had, he was a blue collar man. Um, he swung a heavy hammer for a long time. He worked for the roads and stuff like that with the traffic signs. Okay. And, uh, the guy was in, in pretty awesome shape, you know, gymnasts, they're, they're strong. Yeah. Anyhow, he was doing Pilates and push-ups and, you know, just little stuff at the house to stay fit. He used to ride his bike and everything like that. And uh, I would see him and I remember being a little kid and I'd pull up right next to him and he'd be doing like, uh, I don't know, at the, I think they're flutter kicks or whatever at the time or like leg levers and stuff like that for his core. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'd pull up on right next to him and I'd start trying to mimic what he was doing and stuff like that. And I've been in, you know, I've worked out my entire life, whether it be in karate, um, uh, guy do jitsu, whatever, wrestling, football, you know, I've been in all kinds of sports and I, I think that I'm pretty athletic. Okay. Um, and I contribute that just to just seeing my father working out, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and now I get to see my boys cause I have two younger boys. And they see, because I'm into arm wrestling, because I believe arm wrestling is a sport where an older gentleman can really excel at because of old man strength, right? (laughs) It helps. And uh, so I've been doing arm wrestling because it's really huge out here in Southern California. And uh, they see me on my table. They see me working out. They see me working my cupping and and my, my rise and everything like that, dude. And Next thing you know, they're in there working out. They're using my table. They're on my pulleys. They're, yeah. you know what I mean? It's it's awesome. It's a good feeling to see that, you know? No, it is, man. And and that's so funny you say that because um I, I see my boys mimicking what I do, right? Like I'll, I'll tell my oldest, you know, my four-year-old, I'm like, you know, like, you know, Eli, show me your muscles. And he'll just like start flexing. <laughs> me, you know what I mean? Um, And then my little one too, right? Well, you know, shadow box and he likes to punch back. So I love to see them doing that, man, because it just reinforces to me, like, dude, my kids are watching. Mm-hmm. You know, like, dad, dad, you know, I'll pick them both up, dude. I'm like, oh, man, you know, I'm like, okay, I have them both walking around with them, right? Just playing with them, you know, having a good time. And um, they love it. They they see it. But it, it it reminds me of why I'm doing this. It's like, dude, mm-hmm. these are your, these are my kids. I need to be the example. I want them. I want them to speak so highly of me, dude, when I'm not around. I mm-hmm. want them to be proud to be like, dude, that's my dad. You know, Corey, that's my dad, right? And yeah. um, because that's what I wanted to say about my own father, you know what I mean? And it's like, hey, I want to be able to know that my kids respect me. They honor me, you know what I mean? They love me, but not because they have to, but because they choose to, because they're like, dude, mm-hmm. dad actually cares about me because he shows up for me. You know, he yeah. plays with me. I'm an example. I'm leading them, you know? So that's, that's I think, any dad's mission, right? You have to lead your kids by example, but it starts with you. Like, there's no way that I can tell my kids to do all these things and teach them all these things it's like if i'm not being you know being true to myself and doing Mm -hmm. it myself you know what i mean yeah for sure we definitely got to be a person that they want to emulate um now here's some food for thought so if our kids are watching us as you know and they're emulating what we're doing with this workout right these positive attributes that we're showing them Mm -hmm. imagine if we're not showing them that what are they doing with that you know, if we're showing them because we're talking about stress, right, and how to uh, al- uh, alleviate some of our stress by working out, right? If we're not showing them good positive coping mechanisms, they're going to pick up on those negative coping mechanisms as well, whether it be the drinking, the pornography, the yelling, the anger outburst, whatever it may be. You know what I mean? Going out, um, they're going to see that as well, and they're going to emulate that also. Oh, that's 100. Yeah, that's so true, man. Um, And that's absolutely right. It's like, 
you know, I, I think sometimes I have to remind myself too that, yeah, my kids, that they're kids, but they're their own person too, right? And mm -hmm. they're going to grow up just like we did experiencing life the way we experienced, right? For everyone, it's different, right? Like mm -hmm. we have different experiences. Um, but that does cross my mind. It's like, we're, we, we can't be with our kids 24 seven, you know? Yeah. What I mean? And it's like, I'm sure you have your experiences just like I did when it's like, dude, my parents aren't around. We're in this situation. It's like, we have a decision to make. Do we smoke? Do we not smoke? Do I drink? Do I not? Right. Like we, 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 we get in those, those uh, different situations where we have to make a decision. And I think for me, it's like, look, if I can just teach my kids certain values and certain things and give them the tools, right. That they, they're going to need to navigate mm -hmm. their own way through life. That's my job as a father. You know what I mean? It's like, I can't save you son from everything, but I'm going to give you these tools that you can use. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how to use them when you need them. So you know how to navigate through life um, and stress, dude, it's, you know, just to kind of go back a little bit when, when I grew up in my household, it was so much emotional dysregulation, like so much verbal abuse and physical abuse. Dude, I used to get whooping. My mom used to whoop us with the chancla, with the, with the bell, anything that she can get her hands on, we're getting mm -hmm. hit, you know what I mean? Um, so that left an imprint on me, right? The yeah. Verbal abuse, right? You know, just not, you know, just not being good enough or just getting that verbal assault of like, you messed up, right? You, you, you're a bad kid or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So um, all that, dude, it, it's important to be able to know how to manage your emotions and stress, right? Because uh, mm -hmm. I know a lot of guys financially, there's there's financial pressure, there's, uh, you know, pressure from work, there's pressure just from life. And if you don't know how to deal with that and have the right outlet, it's going to come out in a different way. You know what I mean? The drinking, right? I, how many family members I've seen drink, uh, you know, relatives drink, friend, you know, uh, parents of, of friends, how they deal with their stress, they're drinking, they're smoking. So it's just what example are we going to set for the kids? Um, and fitness, dude, is such a great way, because again, you can do that with your kids, you can mm -hmm. be active with them, you know what I mean? And they learn how to regulate their own emotions by being active with you, you know? Mm. Yeah, for sure. Um, Dr. Mike Gurian from the uh, Spokane Institute of Child Development talked about how his clients, when he's dealing with boys, especially, right? And men, um, he talked about how men are very spatial, okay? And when he asked them how they remember their father, what are the things they remember their father, right? It's usually when they're working, wrenching on a car, when they're working out, throwing the ball with them. And then he put it together and he, he delved deeper into that and he's like it's because of this the way we we're created by god right we're very spatial so when we're using our hands we're open and more able to uh take in more information you know what i mean so guys listen up man if you're using those times to to talk to your kids if you're having an issue talking to your sons start throwing the ball with them start working out with them you know uh work on the car with them have them come into your space and then they'll be able to, you know, get them using their hands and then you'll be able to to really delve deep into what's going on with them. And they'll they'll open up, man. I I, I guarantee you, I've, I've tested it. I tried it here at my home with my youngest. Um, right now he's dealing with some anger issues and uh, he doesn't like to talk about it. But once I started throwing the ball with them and rolling the ball with them and, and playing with them and stuff like that, man, he started telling me that I, I feel sad. And, you know, he started opening up to me. So use those opportunities, you know what I mean? To be able to really connect to your kids. You know, it's not just buying them a toy and saying, here you go, son, you got the baddest toy on the block right now. Have at it. You know what I mean? This is just something simple as tossing a ball with the kid, you know? So utilize it, man. That's what you're there for. You're there to help them be able to navigate life. Yeah, beautifully said, bro. That's that's so true, man. I mean, I don't think I can I can't even think of man, nothing comes to mind of a memory like that where I was actually throwing the ball with my dad or mm -hmm. even working on things, you know. Um, but again, as a kid, I can look back, I can look back now, uh thinking like, man, how great would that would have been? Like, hey pop. Mm -hmm. whatever we're working on the car we're throwing a ball together we're working out together you know my dad didn't work out man he, and that's not his thing you know he, he he's yeah. just a work to be right so which is it is what it is but how beneficial that would have been right to have that yeah. i can share that with him like dad look this is what i like to do and you know you're active with me we're playing together we're working out together it is going to create a bond you know mm -hmm. you're going to open up man it's just it's natural right guys are going to open up that way um so i think that's important man to have that
Yeah, for sure. One thing that struck me, Corey, is when you're talking about your mom, how she used to, you know, verbal abuse and physical abuse and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Um, one thing I see with single moms a lot, and I attested to the father not being around, is that a lot of times, brother, they are so burnt out having to carry the burden of, of, of being both parents. You know, and your mom was self-regulating. She, she was dealing with all those pressures in life the best way she knew how, you know, especially not having parents of her own, really. You know what I mean? They died young on her. Um, so, you know, just to, just to recap on that, you know what I mean? Women were never meant to raise children on their own. You know what I mean? No, you're absolutely right, dude. And especially boys, you know, all yeah. boys, you know what I mean? For I, I don't even know how she did it, dude, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, to raise four boys on your own. Like how, I don't, I mean, my mom's great, by the way. She's an amazing woman. Yeah. Um, but you cannot teach a man to be a man when you're a woman. You, you just can't. Can't, yeah. You know I'm saying? And she did the best she could. I, you know, again, I got so many, so many uh, values from her that she taught me. But mm -hmm. as a boy, it's like, dude, you're looking for that. You're looking for another man to relate with. You're looking for a man to, to lead you, you know, to, to yeah. mentor you, to coach you. So that's what, you know, I'm sure my brothers feel the same way. We're all looking for that. And again, my dad, unfortunately, you know, he, he, I think my dad did what he could do, but he's yeah. also, again, he's got his own stuff that he just never dealt with that unfortunately mm -hmm. was brought up as well. Um, but you're absolutely right, dude. It's like, if, if you don't have that, um, you know, with, with moms, it's like raising boys by herself. It's, it's just too hard. And, you know, as a boy, you're looking for that male role model. Yes. You know what I mean? So, you know, and, and to even just to, to touch base on what you're saying about your father, um, what they call that when a father can't connect to his children like that, they actually call that a curse. It's called the distant dad syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. And they say that the curse of fatherhood is distance. So I attribute it to a curse, you know, and not being able to connect to your kids, not being able to open up to them, you know what I mean? Because they're literally, like you said earlier in the conversation, they're stuck there. You know, what's crazy when you say that, David, it's like, and it's unfortunate, man, because as now that I'm on this kind of like path, I'm trying to get, grow, evolve, mm -hmm. I have my own kids, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to obviously lead them and show up for them. But I feel like, unfortunately, because my dad's still stuck there, mm -hmm. it just creates more of a distance that it's like, well, dad, if, if this is kind of how you're, this is your reality, this is where you are. Mm -hmm. If he's not open to the changes that he needs to make, it, it's really hard, right? Like you can't change anyone, right? You can't save mm -hmm. anyone, change anyone. The only thing I can do is like, look, dad, extend the olive branch. This is how I'm living life, right? I, I This is what I do. This is how I can help you, you know, because I've offered my dad too, like, look, dad, let's work out, you know, let me yeah. get you a date, man, you know, and oh, I don't need it. You know, it, it's, it's just the old patterns, bro. They're still there. And it's like, all right, Pops, well, you know, we can still at least, you know, it's like you have to find some middle ground. Okay, well, how mm -hmm. can we, you know what I mean? Um, but I still have to remember, like, dude, I have my own kids to lead. I need to be the example. And I know what mm -hmm. fitness done for me. And it's like, I'm teaching my sons, like, look, I want you guys to be active uh, for your own health. But this is also a great way for you guys to release these emotions, you know, because that's the thing, man. Guys, we feel things. You know what I mean? Guys, yeah. we feel emotions, right? We we get sad. We get depressed. We worry about how we look. We worry about what other people think. We worry about, you know, all the stress and the pressure that we have to deal with as men. It's so hard because sometimes we feel we have no one to talk to about this. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like, I'm sure there's a lot of guys that are like, dude, I can't talk to my wife about this. Or I can't talk to, you know, whoever. It's like, well, who can we talk to? You know, what guys are there for us? Like, who, what brotherhood do we have where mm -hmm. I can reach out to a guy like you? Hey, Dave, I'm going through something, bro. Can we talk? Yeah, dude, let's let's talk, man. And just hear me out. You know what I'm saying? Just to vent a little bit, right? Um, mm -hmm. I want my kids to see that's healthy. I want them to see dad reach out to talk to another man. I want them to see, hey, dad, this is how dad deals with his emotions. He doesn't hide them and lash out or drink. He actually works out. He talks to other men. He's part of these groups, right? Like, it's just healthy coping mechanisms that I'm trying to show mm -hmm. them, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what are some of the uh, things you deal with? Like, what do you tell your men in your group, right? Mm -hmm. um, how to deal with stress? Like, what do you suggest to them? Like, um, Well, so the first thing, it's kind of like what you mentioned earlier. It was the self-awareness, dude. Like, I have a lot of guys that I work with that 
you know, smart guys, you know what I mean? They're, they're, you know, good guys. It's just, they, they don't know how to recognize these patterns that they have, right? Okay. And stress being one of them, right? It's like, look, if, if you're triggered when this happens, but you're not recognizing it, it's going to continue to happen. It's going to be a repetitive pattern. So what I tell guys is like, look, man, we need to know what, what's going on right now. What, what's stressing you out? And you know what? I actually heard a great quote the other day by Tim Grover. I don't know if you know who that is. He, he was mm -hmm. Michael Jordan's uh, trainer. Yes. Science trainer. He said this beautiful the other day and it stuck with me. He said, you know, the difference between stress and pressure is stress is just pressure that you decide not to deal with. Mm. I was like, dude, that was so profound. I'm like, wow. He's like, yeah, stress and pressure, they're, they're, they're going to happen. The only difference is stress is pressure that you decide not to deal with. And how true is that? It's like, mm. dude, if, you have these, these, if something's stressing you, First, you need to know what that is. Like, what, what's stressing me right now, right? That's number yeah. one. And then the second thing is, what action do I need to take to work through this? And most guys won't do that. Number one, they won't even acknowledge it. And number two, even if they know what's stressing them out, they choose not to. They choose to either avoid it. They choose to numb, sedate, act like it's not there, sweep it under the rug. And, you know, how do we do that? Well, there's vices, man. If I can just drink and numb myself, I don't have to feel anything. Mm -hmm. I can go smoke you know, do a couple of lines of something. I don't have to feel like I can forget about the problem. Right. But mm -hmm. guess what? When that high wears off and that buzz goes away and you wake up that next morning, guess what happens? Your problems are still right there. Dude, smacking you right in the face. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, so um, that's number one, dude, it's just awareness for these guys. And then it's like, depending on what it is, it's like, okay, if now that you're aware, what do we need to do? What's the first step to work through this? Because the only way we're going to get through this is actions. We, we need to take action, yeah. you know? Um, and honestly, man, that's really what it is for each guy. It's just being aware. And then what action do we need to take? And I help them through this. Like, look, man, we're going to work together through this, but I need to know what you need help with. And I need to know that uh, you're willing to do the work, you know, because mm -hmm. it comes down to each guy doing the work. For sure. For sure. And I like that you said action because um, any change is going to react is, is going to require action on your behalf, right? We can't do it for you. You being a coach, you can't make someone do something right. Um, there's an old saying that says uh, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Right. You know, you can give them all the knowledge and skills to develop, to, to, to get in shape, to, to handle stress and everything. But if that person is not taking the initiative and the action to make themselves better and to make that change, nothing's going to happen, brother. You got to want it. Right. And, and unfortunately, a lot of times for men, it's not until you hit rock bottom. It's not until your wife leaves you. It's not until you're diagnosed with something, you know what I mean? And it sucks. It does. And my heart goes out to those people. My heart breaks when I'm hearing stuff like that, especially for men. I don't know what to do. You know, they, they call me, they're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how I got here. You know, it was these subtle compromises all along the way that you were not aware to that she was giving you or your children are giving you or the doctor was giving you or you were not listening to your own body or whatever you know what I mean? these cues mm -hmm. you know and unfortunately sometimes you got to hit rock bottom brother but that's a good thing because now you're ready to make the change you're you're yeah man that and that's so true because um what i always tell people too man is that the two primary drivers of change is is pain and pleasure right mm -hmm. I'm, 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 so um you know maybe let me recap a little bit kind, kind of like what brought me to you right and when i shared that story with a, a a guy that i went to school with who is a lineman who's in who's in who's in the union or was in the union um and unfortunately you know he took his own life Mm -hmm. You know, he took his own life. He checked out, left behind a wife and two kids. And dude, I, I, this is such a big deal with men that we are just checking out and we are just, we're killing ourselves, you know, because we feel like it's the only way out. The only way that I can end this, this suffering is I need to go and just do myself in, right? Just check out, right? Kill themselves. Um, and, you know, I know that's the severity of it. That's like the end of that spectrum. Like, dude, that's serious. But yeah. there's so many things even before that, like you said, there's signs, there's, you know, whether it's the, the drug addictions, whether it's the alcoholism, whether it's the verbal abuse, you know, the lashing out, there's signs that happen. Um, and unfortunately for guys, they, they, if they, at any time in that journey, if they don't decide to get help, it's just a matter of time before it gets worse. You know, it's, it just adds on top of it. It prolongs it. And I always tell guys too, when I, when I have the opportunity, I say, look, man, like 
you always have a decision to make. You have an opportunity right now. Like you can keep doing what you're doing and that's going to take you down the same path. You already know where that leads. Why not mm -hmm. do something different? Why not? Like, hey, you know what? Today, instead of me doing that, I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'm going to work out. I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to, you know, communicate with my wife, my kids. I'm going to take some time out to decompress and go on a nature walk or a hike. Something that's going to positively affect you and move you closer to the change that you want. You know, because I, I see so many guys, man, they just they won't ask for help, dude. I think that's just like it's just this stigma, like for a guy to ask for help. They, they'd they rather die with their pride than to ask for help, which is crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, I know for sure. I know even like for myself, um, we were involved in church and stuff like that. And uh, I didn't have anybody to reach out to and talk to, honestly, because I didn't want to let anybody know that I was going through issues. And, you know, a lot of those issues, I didn't even know how to even tackle them. I didn't have anybody there coaching me, letting me know, hey, man, this could possibly be something that you're dealing with, right? This is before like all the the cool self-help books now. Now everybody's getting aware. That's that's the great thing about where we're at living in these times today is there's podcasts like this. There's guys like you. There's mentorships. There's groups. There's you name it, right? A plethora of different uh, avenues that we can go to, 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 to get help. Now, not everyone is good. You know, so you're going to have to have a level of discernment and what you need to pick and choose. Right. Okay. But there's no excuse. None. You know, it's not like this deal where the only guy who um, you could listen to back in the day was Tony Robbins. Yeah. You know what I mean? And how is Tony Robbins going to tell me how to deal with uh, uh, me being a, an, a, a jerk in my marriage or abusive in my marriage or addicted to pornography or, or even with doubt and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I just, I couldn't see the way it related, but now you have more guys that are out there that can relate that are sharing their problems of being like, Hey man, I've went through this. Let me give you a hand up, not a handout. Right. You know? No, that, that's, that's it, man. And um, that I'm, you know, to touch on that, it's like, yeah, there's so much help out there now. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, guys like you and me, right, sharing stories and and help and helping people. Um, but I do still see the resistance from guys of they they know that it's there. It's mm -hmm. the information's everywhere, right? But there's still that resistance for guys where I think it's just pride, dude. It's just their pride of like I'm not gonna ask for help, or they just deal with it by themselves. They're like, well, the more that I can deal with, it's like a it's like a badge of honor for them. It's like if I can mm -hmm. just put this in, if I can deal with it by myself and that no one know. Um, you know, it's like a badge of honor. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a man because I didn't tell anyone. It's like, no, dude, you don't need to have those bricks on your shoulder anymore. You can re re let those bricks fall. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like just really, you know, you, there, there is a, uh, an opportunity right now for you to have this inner peace that you want. Cause I think that's what I wanted for so long, dude. I just want, I want peace. I want mm -hmm. peace, you know? Um, I just didn't know how to get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, I do it. It's like, who's going to help me with this. Right. And so, you know, I found guys that, that, you know, mentors, coaches that helped me through it. Um, and they gave me the tools, man. It's like you said, they didn't save me. They're not like, Hey man, just join the program and you're safe. No, it's like, no, here are the tools that you need. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? This is the work you need to do. Like in your line of work, right? Like a, like a, a journeyman, they need to know what tool they're using for what job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what Absolutely. I mean? Right. <laughs> so you're not just going to throw it all in there and see what works. Like, no, do you know how to use the hammer, the wrench, right? You know how to do the, you know, the, the, the screwdrivers, right? So it's like, if you know how to use the tools, you can work your way through this and get better, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. There's a, always the right tool for the right job. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, I know people, you know, just to bring it back to our line of work and stuff like that, you know, that are probably listening. They're probably thinking, well, I can use a, a wrench as a hammer, clients as a hammer and everything else. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can, but doesn't going to get, it's not going to yield the same results, positive results. Right. Yeah. So um, with that being said, you know, um, I kind of wanted to pick your brain a little bit about how you've seen stress affecting the brain. Like what have you read or come to conclusion or what have you seen as far as that goes, like with the, the nerve connections, um, people's sleep patterns and stuff like that, that you've seen, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, great question. Uh, Dave. So when it comes to, to stress in the body, um, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's to kind of keep this simple, you know, we have two, uh, you know, we have two parts of the nervous system, right? We have the, the sympathetic nervous system, and then we have the parasympathetic, okay? The sympathetic 
is that fight or flight response, right? That's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what I mentioned earlier, right? Like if we're getting chased by a bear right now, or, you know, we're running for, for our life, like we need that system turns on and mm -hmm. it's going to produce certain chemicals, right? Hormones in the body, right? To, to get a reaction. Hey, we need to be running right now, right? Then the parasympathetic is that rest and digest, right? It's like when you're calm, um, you know, when you're, you just finished eating, right? And you have that calm feeling like your, your body, you know, uh, yeah. your body just mellow, um, you're in a calm state, right? So that's the parasympathetic. That's obviously necessary. The problem that I see with a lot of guys is they're always on, they're always, they always have their sympathetic nervous system on. So that's mm. that go, go, go stress, chronic stress, pressure, you know, anxiety, um, you know, their cortisol levels are up because they're always on like, dude, I need to do this. I need to do that. And there's a million things happening all at once. Mm -hmm. Now, again, that serves a purpose. We, we can't shut that off. The problem is when that system is always on and mm -hmm. it's always running, this is where the, you know, the problems start to happen, right? The yeah. weight, um, you know, the mental fatigue, right? Again, the anxiety, depression, um, just, uh, you know, um, not just not feeling good, man, low energy, right? Mm -hmm. All these health issues, uh, high blood pressure, you know, diabetic, um, the list goes on and on, dude, like when your body is always in that state, you're going to start to really mess up your immune system, your immune system is going to take a hit. And so that's what leads to people getting sick. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, this is, you know, physical health, right? This also affects the mental health, which can lead to a whole bunch of things, right? You know, again, yeah. anxiety, anxiety disorders, depression. Um, so then what do people do to cope with this? Well, when you don't have a healthy coping mechanism and you don't know how to turn that off and, and regulate your nervous system, mm -hmm. at least this is what I did. And I know a lot of the clients I work with, it's so easy to turn to the temporary fix, which is what mm -hmm. the alcohol, the weed, you know, hardcore drugs, right? The porn, whatever is going to give you that relief, whatever's going to yeah. put a mandate off over it, that's what you're going to, because it's the easiest, mm -hmm. you know? And I see a lot of guys get stuck in that cycle. They're like, dude, I have all this stress. I don't really like to work out or I don't know how to work out. I don't know how to eat healthy. So what am I going to do? Well, there's the the beer. It's in the fridge. There's yeah. the, there's the bottle, right? There's, you know, there's the porn. I can just hit the, you know, whatever vices you have, it's like, I see people stuck in that cycle where they, they go to the vices instead of making the change of, Hey, what's, what's going to be a, excuse me, what's going to be a positive coping mechanism. That's going to help me deal with the stress instead mm -hmm. of what I'm doing. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's why I see a lot of people stuck. They, they just don't have the right coping mechanisms and they're always on high alert stress. And that just weighs on them. It, it compounds out their time. What I've seen too, Corey, is that stress that you're talking about. I see that in a lot of first responders, especially guys in our line of work, right? Um, especially when you're dealing with a lot of uh, anxiety, a lot of stress in the workplace, you know, your inches, you know, when you're up in the primary and you're working, you're inches away from danger all the time. You're working between voltages that can blow both your arms off. And we're doing it day after day, hour after hour, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Um, I've seen even for myself and with other people, because the biggest complaint is, Dave, I don't know how to turn it off when I get home. Mm. What I've seen is that that becomes addictive. You do not know how to function in a normal mm. atmosphere because yeah. you're so used to being in that space, that box, if you will, of full of anxiety. Mm. So when you're coming home and you guys take this to heart, listen to this. When you're coming home and you've been in a high risk, high environment, high anxiety box, and you're bringing that home with you into your household, guess what? Your kids are going to pick up on that energy. And then now you're creating the same anxiety within them. And the reason why I say this is because this is exactly what I did to my family. When I talk about how my family felt like they're walking on eggs, it was because I was in a high risk environment where I was burnt out. I didn't recognize that I was being burnt out. And I thought I can go, 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 go. Because for men like us, uh, alpha males, we don't know how to stop, dude. And sometimes it takes coaches, it takes other guys to be able to be like, hey, man, you need to chill out. And you got to be able to receive that that without being offended okay i think the biggest thing nowadays is when someone tells you something like that we're so quick to get offended what do you mean and whatever you know and make it about you okay don't do that if someone's telling you that more than likely it's because they see something that you don't 
Yeah, that's such a great point, bro. That that's spot on because that's absolutely right. It's like if if you're so conditioned to that pattern and you don't know mm -hmm. how to turn it up, like, yeah, you're you're bringing it home. Your kids are seeing it, but then you're you're also kind of worrying that sometimes, like as a badge of honor, like, oh yeah, like I this is you know a man supposed to handle all this at all times. Like, dude, no, who who said that? You know what I mean? You you can let that go. You you can. It's okay to take care of yourself. It's mm -hmm. it's necessary. You got to take care of yourself. Um, but that's a great point, man. It's like. If if you're coming home and you don't know how to unwind and turn that off, because perfect example, I saw that with my mom too. You know, uh, even for mm -hmm. my dad, a couple of times it's like, dude, you guys are bringing this home with you. You don't know how to leave the stress at work or turn it off or switch over. So um, it is seen by the kids, right? I know I saw it. I'm sure you know our kids are going to see it. Um, mm -hmm. but it's it's knowing the tools, right? It's like, hey, dude, how do you decompress? You know, mm -hmm. and what I do, what I tell guys, like, guys, look, I'm not saying you got to go on this yoga retreat or do this, you know you know, crazy, you know, spiritual meditation practice, although those are there and they're helpful. It's like, yeah. guys, start with something simple. Can you just dedicate 15, 20 minutes a day to yourself to go for a nature walk, walk and get some sun? You know what I mean? Take some time for yourself, right? Decompress, simple. You know, you can do this every single day. Um, and if they don't, then again, you're repeating the pattern, you know, mm. start with something that you have control over. You have control over your fitness. Take some time you know, for yourself, man, it's, it's mandatory. It's, it's an, it's a necessity, you know? Absolutely, man. Thank you for all your wisdom there, Corey, man. I appreciate you coming on here and sharing everything that you did with us, man. This is a great conversation. Um, for all those, you guys who are listening, uh, Corey's a coach. This is what he deals with. Uh, Corey, I'm going to give you the opportunity now to just share how did they can get a hold of you if you don't mind. Yeah, no, thank you so much, Dave, for the opportunity, bro. So yeah, you guys can find me on Instagram. I'm pretty active on there. The my my handle is Corey C O R Y underscore fitness. F I T N E S S. That's where you guys can find me. Um, also my email, which is Corey, my name at Corey Cordero Coaching dot com. You guys can also reach out to me there. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I respond to everything. I'm always I'm always active on my social media. Well, once again, thank you, Corey, from the Show Up Dad Foundation. Uh, I appreciate you coming on here and just sharing all your great information, brother. And uh, we'll be talking to you soon, man. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you, guys.